Hello and welcome to the making of Playing With Songs. I'm Rob Langley-Jones and this is episode number 11. For those of you watching the video version, um, you'll notice it looks a little bit different because the reason that is is I've started trying to do a little bit of colour grading. Um, and for those that don't know what colour grading is, anything you see on the TV or on film, uh, they go through and they make the colours look nice and, and they make the bright things look bright and the dark things look dark and all the skin tones look natural. And one other thing I, I want to mention before I continue explaining about this is um, I seem to have caught a bit of a bad cold. My friend came to visit about a week ago and she did have a really bad cold and I thought, oh, I won't catch it, I'll be fine. Um, and yeah, slowly but surely, I've got a bit of a cold, so my voice does sound a little bit croaky. <coughs> so I do apologise for that, I'll have to have another little sip of water. So back to the point about colour grading, so I started trying to colour grade um, this previous episode, episode 10 um, of the making of Playing With Songs, and I, and I thought, well if I make that look nice maybe I'll tr try and make the today's the day episode look nice as well so time will tell whether that happened or not because we just have this week in which to do it left because um, I'm recording a little bit ahead of time uh, and just there was a bit of a loud bang that you might have picked up on the mic which could well be one of the people that lives here who's got these flashbang things um, who's got a bit too much time on their hands and have decided to throw it down on the ground and make a loud bang so, uh, yeah, maybe you can understand why sometimes it's rather difficult to be relaxed whilst living here. Um, if I could live somewhere rather remote, <laughs> you know, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? I'm sure a lot of us would like that. Away from, you know, life would be great without the people, wouldn't it? Anyway, so colour grading. Um, what I learned when I started doing that, I don't know a great deal about colour grading, but I know a, a bit from back when I worked in post-production uh, and studied it a little bit, is that um, you've got the whitest whites, and ideally when you film something... Um, for the like the details say, of a person, ideally you don't want anything in that person to be um, as white as it can be because if it gets to the maximum whiteness, then there's no more detail there, there's no more information there. And what I realised was when I was trying to colour grade just this shot like of me talking now, is that that's what happened on the iPhone camera, uh, which is what we're filming at the moment. There is a way to get around that. But unfortunately, that does mean having a second person. I would need to put the little iPhone on a stand, which I can do, and I'd need someone to be around the other side of it just to bring the exposure down and have it fixed. But I don't have another person, it's just me. So I wasn't able to do that. So I thought, you know, what, can I, what else can I do? So one thing I've just tried now is I've, I've brought all the blinds down apart from the blind that's right by me. Um, and it's still going to mean that my parts of my face were just a little bit overexposed. But what it will mean is that everything behind me should be a little bit darker. And so I should stand out just a little bit more. So hopefully that will look a bit nicer for you. And if you're listening to it, um, hopefully it will also sound a little bit nicer. And hopefully it will sound a little bit nicer um, in episode 10, simply because I'm talking now with more of a deliberate kind of radio technique. Um, I think they train a lot of the BBC presenters to kind of speak very closely into the microphone, like you're speaking to a small child, but you don't want to wake them up. And you're almost whispering, but not quite. So I'm going for an approximation, kind of roughly between that, where I'm trying to keep my voice at an even level, uh, which should make it a little bit more pleasant to listen to, um, because it's the variations in levels that means you then have to keep, you know, turn the telly up or turn the radio up. So, you know, you put a lot of compression through to sort of even those things out. But if the original signal going into the system of me talking, for example, is more at a consistent level to begin with, then you don't need to use as much compression. And also it can then sound a little bit more natural because the compressor isn't having to kick in quite so much. So there you go. I've done my best to improve the video a bit and improve the audio a bit. I hope that it worked out. Um, and if it didn't, it's very much a learning process and step by step we'll get there and uh, we'll make it happen in time. So 
So last week I was talking about getting very, very down. Um, probably the start of the cold didn't help, and now I'm quite quite bad into this cold. And since last week I've been without fail having a proper, proper cold shower every day and doing the Wim Hof breathing, you know, properly. Uh, the only thing I've found, the only bad thing I've found is that um, I'm so cold after the cold shower for a long, long time. It takes a long time for my feet to warm up and my hands to warm up. So I had a little research about that. One thing that came up suggested that uh, once you're walking for half an hour, eventually your uh, capillaries will sort of open up and they warm up your hands and feet, which is good. And that also sort of promotes a growth, I think, of more capillaries in the hands and feet to improve the blood flow. Um, and then uh, what was the other thing? Oh, the other thing is stress. Apparently, uh, when your body, when you're in stress, um, your hands and feet go cold, um, because really, what's expected to happen then of the body is you're then going to be um, doing something physical, like running away from the tiger or the lion, and lion in the in the place of feeling stressed. Which means that even though your hands and feet would get cold, because you're now suddenly running, your hands and feet then would warm, warm up again. But then if you're getting stressed and you're just staying stationary and your blood rate, your blood heart rate is is staying low, then obviously hands and feet are going to get, get cold and stay cold. And I think that's a big factor for me. I find a lot of the time, even when I think I'm quite calm and everything's great, I'm still, you know, a bit stressed. So all the more reason to carry on doing these cold showers as it's bringing down my stress response. I can, I can certainly feel it. It's giving me a lot of clarity of mind, especially when I, I do the Wim Hof breathing because I was getting a bit lazy with it. wasn't really following exactly to the letter and now I've started using the app again and you follow along with him and I'm now getting a bit more out of it you know for instance you breathe in low and then you breathe into the chest and you breathe up to the into the head and then you let it go and then you repeat it and um yeah now when I'm doing this and I'm doing it later on in the day I'm finding a lot more relief a lot more bliss it's like kind of like a reset reset like I stand up again afterwards I'm like oh well that's a relief you know so um so I'm going to keep doing that. And I did it a little bit here and there throughout the day, just kind of when I need it. So that's going to be like the top priority because what that would do is it would make everything in my life that much easier. Also, you know, it, it helps improve the immune system. So I really hope me continuing to do these cold showers, despite having a cold, will hopefully make the cold clear up a little bit faster. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. Um, and, yeah, so I'm going to keep going at it. And uh, yeah, again, recommend it to everyone. I'm sure it's not the only thing out there. There's other ways to to get a bit of peace of mind back, but this seems to be working for me, so I'm going to keep on doing it. I'm just going to touch a little bit more on, on colour grading and just to say why, you know, why bother, why bother doing it? Um, and that's because if you were to take the footage, even if it was shot really well, everything would look a little bit, potentially look a little bit drab and not that great, unless, unless of course, you're shooting in a studio. A studio is a bit different, you know, like a, a live studio that's lit, because that's kind of um, lit in such a way and shot on cameras ideally in such a way whereby you don't really need to colour grade it afterwards. They get the camera set up just right, they get all these white balances set up so the whites look like whites and the skin tones look right on the on the whole, especially for something like the news, so that you can take that material and broadcast it directly. That would probably be a dream for me. That would be the dream of where I'd want to take playing with songs is to get a basic kind of... Um, studio set up you know not I mean studio type type cameras and their lighting system so that I could film this um, and record it and have like um, you know the stacks of the uh, the EQ and the compressor like they would on live TV so that as soon as the second it's done I've got video material that's perfect and then I've got audio material that's brilliant as well that would that would be the dream because then that just takes away all the barriers and then all and then the only thing to focus on is creating the content because at the moment it's many many jobs I mean I'm sure uh, any uh, creatives will know who've tried to share their works on anything online is it's an awful lot of work it's an awful lot of hats you have to wear you know I have to be the presenter you know the script writer the videographer the sound recorder you know the sound mixer the canal the color grader um, you know the composer and the musician and the singer and all those things um, so yes yeah, so the more of those things that can become automated and um, the better really so you know we see how this goes in the long term uh, this is very much a long-term endeavour. I think the only thing that would make me stop 
making playing with songs would be running out of songs and there's a long a long time off that happening because I've got about 80 maybe or 90 songs I've written over the years and that doesn't include raps that I wrote when I was 15 16 and admittedly a lot of those raps were a bit naff but a few of them are quite good you know so they're worth persevering with so I mean at the current rate of releasing a, a full song every two months uh, would mean I was I worked it out the other day based on if there was eighty songs I think it would take something like thirteen years <laughs> so so this project is very much long term um, I plan to to run it for you know at least ten years maybe twenty years um, and hopefully this can turn into a, a full time a full time thing I mean it already is but do you know what I mean a more a uh, substantial thing where I can actually live comfortably <laughs> rather than living on universal credit. But I know we'll get there in time, um, and I know, you know, I know just I know how much I enjoy because um, I've been learning some Beatles songs. Um, there's a guy called Mike Pacelli, and he um, does his videos. And before he breaks down how to play the songs on the guitar, he goes into depth on like the detail behind how the songs were written and and how this happened and how that happened. So. I know that sharing this side of things for people that um, will like my music will find a lot of value in it because I found so much value in Mike Pacelli's videos and just knowing, you know, the ins and outs of, you know, well, why did they approach it this way? Why did they approach it that way? And what was going on at that time? And so I know there's not a lot of value in that. You know, when you take um, another podcast, there's a, there's a good podcast called Song Exploder. That takes a song... Um, that's been out there and then interviews the the band about how they came up with it and and where possible they get like the stems as it were which is um for instance when you record say guitar that'll be on one track the bass will be on one track and the drums will be on another track they'll give them um, the track separately so sometimes they can go through and say oh well, this is what went into this part and they can just play that part on its own which is quite nice you know they made a netflix series of it as well which you can check out um it's pretty good i think the only i mean it's a brilliant show the only downside and i guess well, it's the same downside with my series really is that um it's not always about songs that you've heard of you know i think they did do one on losing my religion by rem and i was like great because that's such a well-known song but uh you know it must be difficult to find people uh who want to do it about their most popular songs but there are some on there i really enjoyed one with um oh, who was it hip-hop group uh mob deep talking about shook ones part two which is a brilliant brilliant hip-hop song and i never knew that the one of the guys in the group had passed away he had some really um horrible condition that caused him a lot of pain and he passed away so it's quite sad but it's a very good song it was interesting to learn that there was the shook ones the first release with a different you know different track to it and then they remade it shook ones part two and i think that explains why uh the raps are just so well written and the rhythm is just so great um because the guy they're interviewing you know still alive was saying he just kept his rap the same and the other guy i thought now i'm gonna if we're gonna do a new version of this song i'm gonna rewrite the raps and make them a bit tighter I wish the other guy had done the same, to be honest. So you'll hear, I don't know the names, but the, the one who sort of rewrote the rap has really got it bang on. It's just, uh, yeah, it's just lovely to to hear so much craft go into something. You know, so when you can listen to these songs, you go, you know, I wonder what went behind that. And you realise, yeah, an awful lot of thought went into these things. And that's what I find fascinating. And, and this is what you're going to get out of playing with songs in time. So I do hope you enjoy that. Um, and uh, next up, I'm going to talk a bit about some ideas I've got for uh, ways to give bonus material or bonus uh, Play with Songs episodes for Patreon supporters, uh, which will be launched now by the time you hear and or see this. Um, and also to talk about other ideas that I'm going to pursue by the end of the week, which will, should already be in place by the time you hear this. Um, I'm going to look into bigger Patreon tiers and goals and offers so that's coming up next but until then let's just have a little a little breather So Patreon exclusive bonus episodes. Um, I mean, if you're really into podcasts, you may like me 
be very frustrated hearing the words Patreon and you think, oh God, not another podcast who wants lots of money on Patreon. I wish they'd shut up. Um, but I mean, there's not much getting around it. It's going to have to be something I mention every week from now on and there's going to have to be some kind of level of advertising. Um, I mean, another one of my favourite podcasts is Talking Simpsons and they do harp on about it a lot, don't they? I do. F- I mean, yeah, I know they've, they've got to say it. They need to get their money. They need to live, you know. But... Um, Anyway, yes. Yeah. So I was coming up with a way because originally I was thinking, okay, we can do um, a Patreon only episode, you know, about a different song. It's going to be this song, Love Seasons, that my friend Yulia has written the lyrics for. At the moment, I've just got the verse and I've just started going through with the chorus. Um, and I thought, well, we can make that, you know, maybe that'll be like an acoustic episode. And then maybe we'll do one where they add the instruments and then maybe we'll do a how to sing and play and. I was sort of having to think and I was realising, well, all these things are going to take huge amounts of time and uh, I need to start working on, um, you know, what would be the third song in playing with songs because I've only got these two ready at the moment. And so, well, how can I, you know, use that song Love Seasons and, and start making content about it now? And I thought, well, when I put the work in to get where I've got to now with the song, that actually took most of the day. I took the lyrics... Um, I took a chord progression that I'd uh, shared with my friend uh, and then we talked about different things and, and I realised there was so much that went into it, so much del- deliberation and intentionality behind every melody. You know, I, I looked at the meaning of the lyrics and thought, well, this line sounds, you know, if someone was to say it in a script, they'd probably be a bit frustrated. So I wonder how I can put that into the the melody and I thought well if I make the melody a bit higher that sounds a bit more um gives a bit more gusto I, I, I'll sing a little bit of it now I don't want to give too much of it away but it, um it's, how's it start again I too am thinking yeah so there's a little line that goes I too am thinking at that time with who and why and where you are And um, I don't know if I got that quite in pitch, but I thought the line with who and why and where you are, I really want to say, oh, I'm really frustrated. With who and why and where you are. Yeah, that's a bit more like how I wanted it. But, you know, I could have stayed down low, couldn't I? With who and why and where you are, or something like that. But I thought, well, it might show a bit more angsty frustration in a line like that. So I really wanted to, you know, deliberately create lots of variations between the higher pitched melodies and lower pitched melodies. And so I realised I've got so much that went in just to that little part of the song and I've got so much to talk about, so much to share that I, I really think people would find interesting. You know, so many different approaches to coming up with melodies and coming up with chords and, and ways to play the chords. And I thought, well, I, I could easily um, break these things down and share this in a series of episodes. Um, And I I was sort of thinking it would be nice to sort of compartmentalise it a bit more clearly and, you know, maybe one episode just on the verse, but I think I'm going to document it a little bit more of how it happened because I come up with one chord progression shared with my friend, said, please write some lyrics, um, and then she gave me the lyrics, and then I used a different chord progression that I'd already shared with her, uh, and then I improvised over... Um, the chord progression and recorded that and then modified it and this, that and the other. And I've got, and there was, you know, that's what happened and it happened in that order. So I think rather than being too strict about what happens in each episode, perhaps what we'll do is I'll I'll very clearly structure what I'm going to talk about, when I'm going to talk about it, and and I'll be able to refer to little clips of work in progress sections. Um, And then just, you know, see how much time that fills. You know, again, I really don't want these episodes to be too long. I think 25 minutes is is long enough. So um, I'm going to start doing that and we'll start making an episode on that. And then we'll have a series of episodes that will possibly culminate in in a full acoustic version of the song. Or depending on the direction it takes, maybe it'll evolve into a song with with all the instruments because even at this stage it could go into you know playing with songs episode um, and I could start adding more instruments now so um, I still think we're going to play it by ear that's going to be a kind of an experimental um, Patreon only episode but I, what I will do is I will share the song when when in the when the song is a, a full acoustic version I think I'll pop pop that on um, the playing with songs uh, YouTube channel oh here we go. So we're coming to the end of our the 20 minutes of our Pomodoro. So we're now on the five-minute wrap-up, which is quite good timing because I've just got 
a few more bits to cover. So yes, yeah, so I want to share the song um, and uh, ideally make a nice, uh, my nice single artwork cover for it. Um, just so that people can have an idea of it and you know and then at the end of the episode we can say hey you know I hope you like this song and if you want to learn more about it you know consider consider um, signing up to the five pound a month tier on Patreon which would get you early access and the bonus episodes so um, Patreon recently um, added support for sterling pounds great British pounds um, which is nice so that means that if you're in another country that is not uh, England the prices will probably look a little bit different. I mean, for instance, I've found now that they've done this for a tier that said it was three dollars for Patreon UK, it says two fifty. So it might say if there's a three pound tier, it may say three dollars fifty in the US, quite possibly. So yeah, we see how we go with that. But um, I was thinking, you know, maybe my appeal could be more in England, but I, I really don't know. We're really not going to know, are we, until I get myself out there. Maybe there'll be more support in uh, other countries. Um, and if the currency, uh, if the predominant Patreons is in dollars, then, you know, maybe we switch over to dollars. We'll sort of see how it goes. Um, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay, so this is the last thing I'm going to cover in this episode, which is uh, just to talk about some of the bigger Patreon tiers, and they have an option for goals and offers. Patreon tiers, goals and offers. So for the bigger Patreon tiers, you see, what I don't want to do is I don't want to undervalue myself because um, you know it's been proven in studies that you can take a, I don't know, like a, a painting or something, sell it for a thousand, but you know, say it won't sell if it's £899, something silly like that. But because it has this big price tag, I think there's more extreme examples, actually. Maybe take the painting, try and sell it for 1000 no one wants to buy it, put up the price to 5000 10000 then suddenly people will buy it. Um, there's that kind of notion that we um, instill value upon items which have a higher price tag, and we just do. So... So it's a bit, you know, it's a bit tricky. You know, the, the, my sort of prices are, have kind of been dictated by what Patreon recommends and what other podcasts uh, start their prices at. But I, I definitely need to have options on there. I think from the very beginning, a very very high price Patreon tier. So at the moment, I'm thinking maybe a hundred pounds. I'm just trying to decide, you know, what you're going to get for those hundred pounds. And I was thinking I might limit them maybe to to five. At the moment, my current idea, you know, it should be finalised by the end of the week. <clears throat> By the time you hear and see this, this, this will already be a, a specific uh, Patreon tier. I was thinking maybe it could be that once a year I will, um, you know, someone will suggest the genre of song and the subject and I'll just make it for them from scratch. Or do they give me the lyrics and then I make a song to the lyrics? It could be that. So I need to kind of sort of narrow that down and make it quite specific. And then if I do do that, you know, do I do a series of episodes like I'm considering uh, for the Patreon only exclusive episodes? Or do I do an episode that um, builds up a song like Today is the Day, which will then be accompanied by a second episode that breaks down how to sing and play it? You know, how many episodes do they get? So uh, we need to sort of narrow that down in time. So that's uh, that's the Patreon tiers that I'm going to sort out. And the next thing is goals. See, there's options on Patreon to set goals. So a bit like Kickstarter, which is a crowdfunding uh, campaign, where you can set things and once you reach a certain goal, then you go ahead with the project. It looks as though you can do the similar thing with Patreon. You know, so far this project's cost me over two grand, about two and a half thousand pounds in costs. Uh, a lot of that's gone on the phone, even though I deliberately got the cheapest, uh, but you know, the best for my uh, purposes phone I could, which is the iPhone um, SE second edition and a new laptop because I, I really couldn't get much editing done on my old Mac mini. So when they brought out these new M1 Macs and I read everything about them, I was like, well, wow, it's going to be incredible. So I've got the, the M1 MacBook Pro, which is wonderful. Oh, here we go. Oh dear. It's asking me to wrap up. Well, we're not quite there yet. Um, so um, I've just seen Apple have announced the uh, the new M1 
IMAX and god they look gorgeous don't they and that's what I was sort of hanging on for and it's such a shame because it's going to have, would have cost about the same to get the kind of iMac I wanted as the as the MacBook Pro and I'd rather have that but but I'm just going to have to wait I think well and I've got I've got <laughs> I've not got any money either so I'm just going to have to wait and save and save and save um, and also um, in this summer job I'm going to I think where we're living it's you know it's not that it's not secure it's just that because it's such a hot place the windows and the doors are going to be open all the time and so I don't really want to have like a expensive uh, computer sitting there that people can see you know if they walk by so we'll have to sort of hang on but that's my dream really is to get one of their new iMacs which you may have seen if you're into Apple they've got 24 inch four and a half k screens I think the only thing that was a shame but I think everyone thought they were going to move, move on from the M1 processor and, and you know make an M1X or M12 but it seems they're holding off but uh, to be fair this M1 processor is on um, using it in my laptop it is incredibly fast the only thing i've found sometimes you click on an application to load and it takes a few seconds longer you know but the most is like i don't know three or four seconds but once it's loaded everything in it is so fast like really really fast and i wonder whether that would go away if i had the 16 gig of ram but i've, I've just got the 8 gig of ram but even with 8 gigs of ram it's it's so fast it's so great anyway i digress it would be nice to be able to cover my costs I've also got recurring costs to Podbean, which is uh, nine dollars a month, which you pay in a year up front. So yeah, so we might add goals to cover the costs, and um, it would be nice to to put something at the end of it to say, you know, once these costs are covered, then the money beyond that can look at more investment, couldn't it? More investment in equipment. Um, I guess it's just figuring out which equipment is going to add the most value. To, to you as a listener as a viewer you know what's gonna what's gonna allow me to create more content or better quality content and it's just figuring out what those things are so I can really direct it into the right direction so we'll have a little think think about this week and see where we get up to and then the last thing is the offers they have options to have offers and um, there's this cool guy uh, Rob Moore British guy who's uh, I think he's got a lot of his money from you know, working in properties and stuff and buying and selling. You know, he knows his stuff. He's written lots of books. I read one of his books called Money, um, which was great. I mean, I, I learned a lot, but I still have a intense disinterest in money and how it works. It's a bit of a mental block there, which I'm trying to sort of break down. But he did um, a webinar on sort of like the ideal way to launch something and suggested that, you know, you want to sort of drum up all this support and uh, and then have these like exclusive offers, you know, that only a certain number of people can get and then like have the offers open and then close and have exclusive content and this kind of stuff. So I would like to do something like that um, and the, with the Patreon offers option. So I mean, if, if we can give people something that they'll only ever get at that time for that one week and then it will disappear and never be available again. <clears throat> you know, see, at this point, I've not really advertised the podcast and the project. So, you know, the chances of people signing up to these exclusive offers is, is unlikely. But I believe you can add these offers a few times. So uh, the idea really is, is to have this launch on the 3rd of May, which would have, would have happened by now, um, and then have like, a, you know, another wave of launch as time goes on uh, and sort of sort of keep pushing it out. Um, it's just it's just going to be a little bit tricky, I think, because obviously I've got the summer job and that's going to take up a lot of my time. So uh, we'll see how it goes, but we're definitely going to commit to what we've planned to commit to. And uh, hopefully for the next episode, I might be a little bit less stuffy, but um, I'll tell you what, I'll let you in on a secret. It might actually have to be the case that the next episode could well possibly be recorded in the same week of this episode. And th Now, the reason that is is because... Up until now, I've been about two episodes ahead, which is good. I mean, really, I wanted to be a month or two ahead. I've just been about two episodes ahead. But now, with the Patreon launch and the early access, it's meant that I've lost that extra week of being ahead. And so, really, I need to be ahead on Patreon as well. And the reason that is because if anything else comes up in my life, I can't, um, that I can't put on hold, you know, to get the project done, then we'd miss deadlines of release of episodes. And I can't do that because I think it's very, very important to be consistent in the releases. So therefore, uh, I am going to be very busy the next few days going through these things, and this next episode uh, may be updating you on a lot of these things and sort of saying where we're at. Um, 
and you'll get to find out a bit more about what's going on. And what I might do, what I've been considering to do, is perhaps putting in a little preview of what would be the gist of the exclusive Playing With Songs uh, episode for Patreon, talking about the song Love Seasons. So I might record that and uh, put a little snippet in the show to give people a bit of taster, a bit of a taster and um, a bit of incentive to um, support the show. And that's that's the £5 one. So at the moment, as it stands, the, the tiers, um, assuming they've not changed, uh, were at £3 for early access, £5 for early access and bonus contents, £15 to get two exclusively designed mugs each year. And this is exclusive, these aren't available anywhere else. Uh, and £30 a month to get two T-shirts a year, you know, as well as the early access and the, uh, and the bonus episodes. And then I'm going to add another tier, which is not yet set in stone, probably £100, um, to have something of, you know, a much bigger value. Um, so there we go. So, yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I hope you've got some value out of it. And, um, you know, I hope my voice hasn't been a bit too creaky for you. Hopefully you've been able to hear what I'm saying okay, just about. And uh, so until next time, have a lovely, lovely week. Um, I've been Rob Langley-Jones, and this has been uh, episode 11 of The Making of Playing With Songs. So take good care. Bye-bye.